Welcome to the Healthy Vision Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Edward Kondrat, and today we're going to be discussing oxidative treatments, in particular using ozone. These podcasts are held the third Saturday of every month at noon Eastern Standard Time, but This podcast has been delayed because I was the keynote speaker at the Christian Ophthalmology Society meeting talking about homeopathy. And I hope next month to uh, present my material on um, homeopathy, the talk that I gave to the Christian Ophthalmology Society meeting. And I'm hoping to convince ophthalmologists to investigate homeopathy and begin to incorporate that into the practice. So you can sign up uh, healthyvision.us to be updated on all of the podcasts. So let's begin. Let's begin. Now, ozone has gotten a bad rap. Rap. There's good ozone and there's bad ozone. The bad ozone is uh, that stuff that's a pollutant. And if you do breathe ozone, it can be harmful to your lungs. Good ozone. We know that the There's ozone layers uh, between the stratosphere and the troposphere, and that helps protect the Earth from unwanted ultraviolet light. Uh, But I'm going to be talking about ozone, the medicinal purposes of ozone, how it can help restore your vision and improve your health. But before before I do that, I've been listening to a brilliant uh, psychiatrist and statistician, uh, Matthias Desmond. And you can Google his name and, and, and listen to some of his talks. And he had something interesting to say that medicine is in a really s- sad state right now. That medicine is controlled by dogma, not by scientific fact. And we kind of know what has happened with the COVID epidemic. It was dogma. No matter what researchers and a, a different opinion was concerning ivermectin, homeopathy, uh, vitamin C IVs to treat the virus that was uh, treated with scorn and heresy and you weren't following the science. And uh, Dr. Desmet uh, speaks about that it's very similar to what, what, what it was like during the Middle Ages. There was dogma. You know, the earth was flat. And if you had any other theory about uh, the earth being round or the earth not being the center of the universe, you were a heretic and you were persecuted. And of course, when Galileo came up with his theories, he was persecuted. And much that is happening right now, that if you don't follow the dogma that's put out by Big Pharma, uh, the political systems, you are a heretic. You are banned from social media. Uh, They are really not looking at science. And Dr. Desmet has looked at recent publications and he feels that he feels that 80%, 85% of recent publications are false because they're following dogma. So it's a really s- sad state for medicine. And ozone fits into that category. Ozone is not part of the dogma. If you would call up and uh, uh, talk to the FDA about ozone, they'd tell you it's a poison. It shouldn't be used at all. So. I'm hoping to convince you that ozone does have scientific merit and it should be something that you should consider in the treatment of various health issues and in particular eye problems. What does ozone do? Ozone is a powerfully charged oxygen molecule. It's O3. It has a negative charge. And that negative charge helps to alkalinize your body. I think we all know that You want to have an alkaline pH, and alkaline pH means health, and acidic pH means that um, you have disease. Ozone increases oxygenation. We know that oxygen is needed for health and for regeneration. More oxygen you have, the better. Ozone reduces inflammation. Inflammation is always present during disease, and usually it's the inflammation that causes problems with scarring and long-term damage to the body. Ozone stimulates healing and it helps balance the immune system, which is key. So when ozone is introduced into the body, 
ozonides are formed. And ozonides are kind of byproducts that circulate. The ozone uh, is attached to different molecules, the red blood cell, etc. And one thing that it does, it increases uh, cytochrome A and ATB as much as 40%. And uh, we know cytochrome A is uh, very, very important for as an antioxidant. And ATP is kind of the gasoline of our cell. Increases it by 40%. It increases the PaO2, PVO2 difference. That's the difference between the arterial blood and the venous blood. So that means that more um, oxygen is getting into your bloodstream. It enhances red blood cell membrane distensibility. What does that mean? Well, if you have rigid red blood cells, they get blocked in the capillaries. And that could be a cause of stroke or a heart attack. So we want the red blood cells to be pliable and flexible. It increases cytokine production. And cytokine is an important um, compound to help reduce inflammation, stimulate the immune system, fight infection, etc. It increases the antioxidant buffering capacity and it increases the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation. In other words, the oxygen is able to dissociate or free itself from the hemoglobin to get into your body to do what it's supposed to do. Other effects of ozonides, antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral. You know that many swimming pools now have ozone generators instead of chlorine. The ozone kills the bacteria. Ozone has been very effective in treating viral infections, including COVID. Yes, COVID. There's been many documented studies on treating COVID. In fact, there's been a documented study using ozone to treat the Ebola virus, which was published. Uh, and uh, there doesn't seem to be any resistance. So the virus and fungus and bacteria don't become resistant to ozone. Ozone just kills them. Ozone enhances chemotherapy and radiation, which is a plus. Uh, so if you are getting chemotherapy and radiation, ozone can enhance the effectiveness of those treatments. It activates NRF2. Uh, what in the world is NRF2? Let's talk about that. It is the nuclear factor two, NRF2. It's a transcription factor which when activated increases the expression of antioxidant enzyme system. That sounds like it'd be a good, good thing. You know, the antioxidants fighting um, harmful um, elements that go into your body. The NRF2 is the pathway, it's considered a primary cellular defense against cytotoxic effects of oxidative stress. We are constantly under stress not only mental, emotional, but environmental factors. So this helps stimulate that primary pathway in the defense of these uh, oxidative stress. NRF2 is the master regulator of cytoprotection, cellular protection. And there's been many, many publications on this. It increases detoxification regulates production of phase two enzymes, which are important for body functions and detoxification. Enhances stability and turnover of proteins. We are constantly making new proteins in our body for enzymatic factors, for building muscles and uh, regaining um, the tissue structure. Reduces inflammation, protects against neurodegeneration. And I should underline that five times because when we have macular degeneration glaucoma, it is neurodegeneration, has an anti-tumorigenic effect, and it promotes longevity. So that NRF2, I'd like to have more of it. How do you get more of it? Do ozone. It increases the NRF2 factors. As I mentioned, very, very effective for inactivation of bacteria, viruses, fungi, fungi yeast, and protozoa. Um, I talked to many patients who uh, I've never been well, doctor, since I got my candida infection. I've never been well since I got my Lyme disease. Well, ozone can help in all these infectious processes. It stimulates oxygen metabolism, which is good. We need oxygen 
to help uh, regenerate and help function. A lot of times we have good oxygen in our body, but we're not utilizing it. And ozone does help uh, stimulate the oxygen utilization. Activation of the immune system increases the production of interferon and the output of tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-2. These are all important elements to help our immune system fight disease. I had the pleasure of speaking at the 9th World Oxygen Ozone Congress, which was held in Rome, Italy in 2013. And what a meeting. 27 nations were represented and over 95 presentations. Ozone is widely accepted in Europe. And it was an amazing meeting and I spoke on ozone in ophthalmology. These are some of the topics, cancer, heart disease, obesity, metabolic disease, chronic fatigue, non-healing ulcers, disc pain, infections, um, ulcer stomach disease, dentistry, and much, much more. It was an amazing meeting. Uh, cases were presented, in fact, Dr. Robert Rowan presented a case of three cases of um, malignant melanoma that were successfully treated with uh, ozone. Phenomenal, phenomenal meeting. But let's talk a little bit about what it can do for the eye. Dr. Sylvia Mendenes from Cuba presented a 20-year study on the use of rectal insufflation in the treatment of retinitis pigmentosa. Apparently, there's a very high incidence of retinitis pigmentosa in the Cuban population. This was a controlled study, and the study did show the effectiveness in ozone treatment in terms of reversing uh, vision loss in the expanding the visual field. I presented my experience in using ozone over the past 10 years in various, treating various eye disease. In fact, I stimulated so much interest at the University of Rome, expressed interest in doing a collaborative study in the use of ozone in the treatment of macular degeneration. But this study has already been done. Dr. Velio Bocci in his book, Ozone, which is considered the Bible, talks uh, about reversing macular degeneration with ozone. Uh, Dr. Mendenez uh, uh, presented a paper on the study of 200 glaucoma patients. Their visual acuity improved, the visual field expanded, and there was a tendency to lower intraocular pressure, and also the visual evoked potential improved. This is a test to measure the optic uh, nerve function. These results demonstrated the effectiveness of this treatment and functional recovery of the nerve fibers, which were partially inactive. So many of you may be thinking, oh, ozone, it sounds too good to be true. Well, typically I think ozone is my second line of treatment. I like microcurrent, I like light therapy, and I like homeopathy. Ozone should then be considered as a, an alternative treatment. Ozone, I think, works extremely well in combination with using microcurrent homeopathy and uh, light therapy. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, Dr. Velio Bocci's book, Ozone, he documents the effectiveness of ozone in the treatment of macular degeneration. Dr. Robert Rowan and Dr. Frank Schellenberger, two authorities in the U.S., actually they have a worldwide reputation in being experts in ozone treatment and their success in treating macular degeneration. Uh, Dr. Rowan is a very good personal friend of mine, and I'd like to share with you a video, uh, him talking about ozone treatments. And his website is drrowandrsue.com down below. So let's watch this video. I've been asked to talk more specifically about oxidation therapy and especially ultraviolet blood irradiation therapy. Virtually everything I tell you about this therapy, ultraviolet blood irradiation therapy, also is the same for intravenous hydrogen peroxide or ozone therapy. All of them are lumped together in a topic we call oxidation therapies, and they all have very similar but not identical effects on the body. Many years ago, a, a scientist um, named Knott, K-N-O-T-T, found that if he took a small amount of blood out of a person or an animal and irradiated it 
with ultraviolet C energy and gave it back to the organism, whether it was a dog or a human, infections would go away in hours. Sometimes even the patients were getting better in minutes. In hospitals, patients were dying of horrible infections, and this was before the age of antibiotics. And the effectiveness rate of this treatment in just usually one or two treatments was 50% for comatose patients, patients about to die, and 98 to 100% effective for moderately advanced infections or less advanced infections. It was found to be effective equally for viral disease like polio and uh, viral influenza, as well as bacterial infections. The treatment is done by taking approximately six ounces or perhaps seven ounces of blood from a patient and running it through an ultraviolet light and then giving it back to the patient. Uh, this also can be done with ozone. If it's done with intravenous hydrogen peroxide, a small amount of peroxide is given over a slow drip intravenously. These treatments are exceptionally safe. The American literature back in the 1940s reviewed thousands of cases and never found a single, influ a, a single case of a bad or toxic effect in patients. And we compare that to drugs today when the fourth leading cause of death in the United States is doctor-induced injury, usually due to drugs. These treatments were found to treat staph, including drug-resistant staph, pneumonia, Worldwide literature, even today, coming out of Russia, suggests it can be used for tuberculosis. The treatment helps by activating the white blood cells to kill bacteria. Also, by taking perhaps the seven ounces of blood out of the patient, we expose it to ultraviolet light, and the ultraviolet light inactivates the bacteria that are in the blood. These, the blood is then given back to the patient, and the immune system sees the inactivated bacteria and can mount a much better immune response. It's like an auto vaccine for the patient of the very thing that's causing the problem. German literature shows that these treatments increase mitochondrial production of ATP, which is energy, the most critical thing for the body to function. It improves clotting parameters, making the blood less viscous, so you're less likely to clot and have a circulation problem. They lower blood pressure. They raise oxygen delivery to the tissues. They improve cholesterol metabolism, uric acid metabolism, and, and especially the oxygen delivery to the body. Platelets don't stick together so much, and one of the causes of heart disease is platelet stickiness. The Russians are using these therapies, especially ultraviolet therapy, to help patients with vascular disease with great success. There is a book written by William Campbell Douglas called Into the Light. I strongly recommend that you get that book. It is available. It's in print and it details the American experience in this therapy of 40 and 50 years ago. The treatment is making a resurgence today. There are hundreds of doctors doing the treatment now. I teach it at conferences around the country, and I'm really happy to tell you that uh, ultraviolet and ozone are probably my most favorite treatments to do because they have apparently a complete lack of toxicity. The patients do exceptionally well. It is very useful for a variety of diseases from circulation problems to infection to chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia simply because of the beneficial effect that the therapy has on the metabolic processes of the body. It improves enzyme processes, it kills unwanted bacteria, it improves oxygen, and it improves circulation parameters, all virtually risk-free. So let's move on. Now, the methods of oxidation therapy. Well, Dr. Rubin talked about many of these. Uh, hydrogen peroxide, intravenous hydrogen peroxide is one method. Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, which is an ox oxygenated water molecule. Uh, it has that charge. 
and that can be very effective. Many doctors are doing IV hydrogen peroxide. Autohemotherapy, that's the method where you need to go to a doctor's office and a small amount of blood is taken out of your body and it's mixed with ozone gas and then put back into your body. That's very powerful and very effective. Ultraviolet blood irradiation, UBI, this is where a small amount of blood is taken out of your body and it is then irradiated with a, a very intense ultraviolet light and then put back into your body. Now the first three are treatments that are done in a doctor's office under medical supervision. Uh, they are probably maybe a little bit more powerful than the next three I'm going to be talking about, but they do have a lot of cost and they do require going to a doctor's office, traveling, etc. The bottom three, rectal insufflation, auricular and ozone eye drops, are treatments that you can do on your own. And I like to empower you as a patient to be able to do these therapies on your own. Uh, rectal insufflation, auricular ozone drops. So let's talk about those. It does require uh, a small investment. You need to buy an ozone generator. And for the rectal and auricular, you do need a tank of oxygen. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. All right. So, the rectal and auricular are less costly. Uh, no IV insertion is necessary and it empowers you as the patient. And here's your years truly during the COVID epidemic, I was doing uh, daily auricular ozone and daily rectal insufflation to protect my immune system to prevent me from the COVID virus. Here's the setup for making ozonated eye drops. Now the ozonated eye drops, you do not need a tank of oxygen. We use these simple ozone generators that use ambient air. And this achieves a very low gamma or low ozone concentration in saline. And then we use these saline eye drops to treat uh, dry eyes and irritated eyes. This is a setup in the office that we use medical grade um, oxygen and there's a tank of uh, air gas that's the company that supplies the oxygen and that's our ozone generator in the office. Um, one uh, question I always get from patients, am I able to obtain oxygen? Well, when I was in California, which is probably one of the most regulated states in the country, I went to the air gas store got a tank of oxygen. They didn't ask me for ID. I didn't need a doctor's uh, uh, prescription. <coughs> so industrial oxygen is very easy to get a hold of. Is there a difference between industrial and medical? No, both are 99.9% .9 oxygen. And I am confident to say that the oxygen industrial is equal to the medical and you don't have the hassle of needing a prescription, etc. So now I have some videos, let's listen to this. This one is how to make your ozone eye drops. Hi, I'm Dr. Kondra, and I've been asked to do a short video on how to make ozonated saline drops. They're really popular with many patients. They're great to relieve uh, tired, <coughs> sore eyes. Also, if you have dry eye syndrome or inflammation of your eyes, it's great. And they're just extremely helpful and beneficial for your overall <coughs> eye health. I like the CATS ozone generator. It's an inexpensive ozone device. And it's much different than many of the other ozone machines in that it doesn't require medical grade oxygen. This machine takes ambient air and makes a low concentration for ozone eye drops. And that's what you want. If you do have a commercially available machine that uses oxygen, you want to keep a very, very low gamma, under 5 gamma, ideally around 2 to 4 gamma. And that's, this is what this machine will deliver. It's very simple. There's a tube that connects and there's a small aquarium bubbler. You need to purchase preservative-free saline. And that's very important, preservative-free saline at 0.9%. Um, 
we uh, do sell commercial uh, preservative free saline in our office that we use for IV therapy. The reason why you need to get preservative free, the ozone will interact with the preservatives and make harmful byproducts. You do not want to use water to ozonate and use on your eye because that will burn your eye. It's not the right osmolarity. You want a 0.9% uh, percent saline and it's very, very soothing for your eye. And the saline seems to hold the ozone a little bit longer. Very simple, you turn the machine on for 15, 20 minutes, and you can see it's bubbling ozone. And what we do is we like to put a washcloth on top. Now, it's also important that you use a glass container. You don't want to have a plastic cup or a plastic container. I like this flask, you can buy this on Amazon.com, uh, because it has a narrow neck. But you can use a mason jar, or you can use a glass at home. So we put our saline in here, we bubble for 15 to 20 minutes. Then when it's done, the machine will shut off. It's also important to get a small glass eyedropper bottle. Once again, glass is important, you don't want plastic. And then you just pour the ozone into the bottle. You have your ozone drops. And then you apply them to your eye. And they're very, very soothing. How often do you apply them? Well, once you ozonate the saline, that's when they're the strongest. So I'd recommend every five minutes, every minute, flood your eyes with the ozonated saline. Then after that, maybe every 15 or 20 minutes. Now, the ozone does not last in the saline. The half-life of ozone in saline is about two hours. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, half the ozone will be gone in two hours. Then in another two hours, you'll have one-fourth and so on. So you can see by the end of the day, you're going to have very, very little ozone in the saline. So what I recommend, keep this on your kitchen counter, and then you pour this back in, and then re-ozonate. Put it back in. Don't, you know, it's not necessary to throw the ozone, ozonated saline away. You put it back in. Don't have to worry about contamination because ozone is a powerful disinfectant. It's going to destroy the, all the bacteria. As long as you ozonate it for 15 to 20 minutes, you're safe. Put it back in the bottle. So I have some patients that maybe have severe dry eyes. They use the ozonated saline um, all day long and they re-ozonate it. Uh, in the afternoon, in the evening, and maybe, maybe at night before they go to bed when they have good fresh ozone. You can also keep it in the refrigerator. If you keep it in the refrigerator, it'll probably last a little longer. Ozone, uh, ozone is wonderful to help disinfect uh, your vegetables. If you buy some vegetables and you're concerned they may have pesticides or contaminants on them, put them in your kitchen sink, run the little bubbler, uh, sterilize and purify your vegetables. You can also drink ozonated water. So in your drinking water, drop this in, ozonate it, and drink it. It's wonderful. So I hope this video was helpful. If you do have any questions, give the office a call at 800-430-9328, or you can go to our website, www.healingthei.com. This is Dr. Kondrat wishing you good health and clear vision. Now, common questions that I do get regarding the ozone eye drops, they are very effective for treating dry eyes, inflammation, blepharitis. Can they help with glaucoma? Can they help with cataracts? Can they help with iritis or uveitis? Well, in my experience, they have very little effect in the treatment of cataracts and also very little effect in the treatment of macular degeneration. In order to treat macular degeneration, we need to look at the other two treatments, either the rectal insufflation or the auricular ozone. Can they be helpful for glaucoma? They could be very helpful for glaucoma in terms of negating the side effects from any of your glaucoma medications. Those of you that are taking glaucoma medications, you get redness, burning, and itching the ozone eye drops can help. 
The ozone eye drops may have some beneficial effects in terms of lowering the pressure uh, and reducing inflammation and helping the glaucoma, but it, once again, it's not the mainline therapy for glaucoma. In terms of iritis and uveitis, iritis is a, an inflammation in the anterior part of the eye. It may have some effect, but I'm not telling you to stop your medication and just use ozone. It may have some additional effect. In terms of uveitis, the ozone eye drops probably have a very minimal effect. Most of the effect from the ozone um, eye drops uh, are uh, superficial. They just don't go deep into the eye. You need to consider either the rectal or the um, auricular, which I'm going to be talking about next. So let's move on. Now, those of you that may want to watch some of these videos, you can go to YouTube and search my last name in ozone and you'll find them. So let's talk about rectal insufflation. Okay, go. Yeah, hi, this is Dr. Kondrat, and I'm going to be giving you some instructions on the ozone generator for rectal insufflation. So you'll receive your ozone generator in a box like this. And um, I want to just tell you, don't be intimidated. This is the generator here. It's very simple. O2 in, that's where the oxygen comes in, and ozone. And uh, you have uh, a plug for your uh, electrical connection. We have everything here, and then you also get some tubing. So now we're set to go to the next stage. Now you need oxygen. It either has to be uh, medical grade oxygen or industrial grade. The first thing you have to determine is if you can purchase medical grade or industrial grade. There are some patients who have difficulty getting a prescription for the medical grade, but the industrial grade is just as fine. Now the reason for that, there's two different types of valves. We have one for the industrial tank and we have one for a medical tank. So you have to determine the first step is to get the right tank for your equipment and then let us know and then we'll ship the right connector for you. But this, ha this happens to be a medical grade tank. And this is the regulator. And it's very simple to connect. Even a retired eye surgeon can do this. And when you connect it, you probably want to make sure that your, your control valve is here so that you can see it. Like that. Next, you'll get some tubing to connect the regulator to your ozone generator. And it's very easy to slide in. And then it's clearly marked O2. O2 in. So you're all set for this part. Next you'll connect your electrical supply and it plugs in the back. Right here. Plug it into an outlet. Now you do have some indicator lights here. You have the power and you have the ozone. So when I do click this on, you hear some noise and you hear the ozone light is on. That means it's generating ozone. Now you do have to be careful because ozone gas is toxic to breathe. It's wonderful for therapeutic treatments for rectal insufflation or mixing it with blood, mixing it with water to drink or making eye drops, but we do not want to breathe the ozone. So you do have to take precautions with this. Don't run it excessively. If you do smell something funny, make sure there's plenty of ventilation in the room. Okay, now that we're finished with that, now we're going to go into the nuts and bolts of the treatment. You also have, it also comes with an insufflation kit. And this is all the material you're going to get. You have 
uh, two bags and two syringes. So let me open up one bag here. This is your rectal insufflation bag. You also have several catheters. These are the rectal catheters. And you also have a couple of syringes. The syringes are used for cleaning. Uh, you do not have to replace these catheters after every use. You can simply rinse them with water. If there is some fecal material inside, you can fill this syringe with water and irrigate the uh, catheter. By connecting it here and irrigating it. Okay, now we're all set for our first rectal insufflation. It's a twist valve that connects right here to the machine. Very simple. And you also have a, a safety valve here. You may want to make sure it's open. And to make sure if you can slide it, that means it's open. If it's locked, you're not going to be able to put any ozone into the bag. You know, if you also notice, there's a little thumb, little hand mark right here for different levels. So if your finger's right here and you fill this bag up, you're going to get 200 cc's. If your finger's here, you're going to get 400. If there's nothing, the whole bag fills up. So what I recommend is you begin with 200 cc's. 200 cc's. By putting your finger here. Now you also see it's important that you use the right concentration. The ozone comes in different gamma. It's recommended that you use 37 to 40 gamma for rectal insufflation. And if you look over on the chart, the setting should be 1 eighth. Now what does 1 eighth mean? Well, 1 eighth means the setting on your valve. So your valve has different settings. 1 eighth is the setting right there. So you want to make sure the valve is set right. Now it's interesting, the faster the oxygen flows, the less the oxygen is going to be ozonated. The slow flow, you get much more ozonation. That's why we're using one eighth. That's one eighth liter per minute, which is slow, so we get the maximum ozonation. Okay, so we have our bag connected. Then you turn on your oxygen. When you turn on the oxygen, you should see the needle in the green area, which indicates full. This is an empty tank, so I have no oxygen in here. So imagine the needles by green. Then um, you're set to go. What you do is you just hit the button here. The green light comes on. Put your finger here. And you wait until this side becomes full of ozone. When it's done, you shut off the button. No. Then what you do is you lock it so the ozone doesn't escape. Then you disconnect this. It's very simple. And you have your ozone in the bag. Now, it's going to be really full with your finger here, but once I take my finger away, it's going to leak in the bag. So don't think that, oh my goodness, all the ozone disappeared. No, it's still in the bag. Then you're going to get your rectal catheter. Connect this. Then you're going to use olive oil. You don't use Vaseline, you're going to use olive oil. And I recommend a good grade of Italian olive oil. Now, why olive oil? Ozone will interact with petrochemical products and it'll make harmful byproducts. So you don't want to use Vaseline, you want to use olive oil. Olive oil is very safe to use with ozone. Matter of fact, some companies actually make an ozonated olive oil for your skin. So then you just put, dip the end of this, then go into the bathroom or lay on the side, you insert this rectally. Once it's, you're certain that's inserted rectally, and you don't only have to go maybe one or two inches. You don't have to worry about going in too far, because when the doctors do it, a colonoscopy, I mean, they go up a couple feet. So don't worry that you're going to hurt yourself. Go in a couple inches. Now when you're ready, open up the valve. 
and then you're going to roll this to get all the ozone gas. Push it into your body. Push it in. Hold it. Now, if you let go of this, the ozone is going to go right back into the bag. So you put it in, you bear down your sphincter, and you pull out the catheter. Mm -hmm. Then hold it for about 10 minutes. Uh, the ozone is very quickly absorbed through the rectal mucosa. So even if you lose some within the first couple of minutes, you're still getting an effective treatment. As you do the ozone, you're going to become more and more comfortable. When I first started to do it, I would lose gas instantly. After a while, I've had more control. Then I would recommend after you do 200 for a while and you're comfortable, you may go up to 400. I also recommend that you do this uh, five days a week, Monday through Friday, take a break on the weekend. And this is probably one of the most powerful treatments you can do. It's uh, oxygen uptake. It's very powerful for regenerating tissue. And it's quickly absorbed into your bloodstream, going to your eye, your optic nerve, parts of the body that's needed. So many people will feel uh, increase in health, vitality, more energy. So it's a wonderful therapy. Okay, that was um, the rectal insufflation. Now, all of these ozone treatments uh, are very effective, but still, I believe my number one therapy is a microcurrent uh, followed by, well, actually, I shouldn't say follow. I think my number one treatment is homeopathy. I've seen more miracles with homeopathy than any other treatment. I also like microcurrent, microcurrent is a little bit easier to do than the ozone therapies. And in my experience, it's probably a little bit more effective in reversing eye problems. And then the light therapy. Uh, so ozone should be number three or four on the list. Many of you have just started uh, the Chondrot Restore Vision program. I usually like you to, you know, do the basic treatments, the microcurrent light and homeopathy for three months, then maybe add the ozone. Those of you that have serious vision problems and maybe uh, you don't have the financial restraints, then I would say just jump right in uh, to the ozone. Okay, let's move on and talk about the auricular. All right. Hello everybody, this is Dr. Edward Kondrat and I've been asked to do a short video on auricular ozone treatment. And what is auricular ozone treatment? Well, auricular means the ear. And this is administration, administration of ozone through your ear. I've given previous uh, YouTube videos on making ozonated eye drops, which I love. Also, um, a previous YouTube video on the use of uh, rectal insufflation, which is administering ozone uh, rectally. And now I'm going to be talking about auricular administering ozone through your ear. So what's the big deal with ozone? Well, ozone is a really an important part of uh, my medical practice. I feel it is very valuable for stimulating rejuvenation, uh, stimulating healing, and reversing chronic eye disease. And of course, now with the concern of the COVID virus, uh, many patients are embracing ozone therapy as a way to strengthen their immune system and potentially kill uh, the virus. Uh, my good friend, Dr. Robert Rowan, uh, gave an excellent interview on Healthy Vision. And if you'd like to listen to that interview, go to healthyvision.us. And I'd like to summarize some of the things that Dr. Rowan said about ozone, just so you know how important this treatment is. Uh, the most important factor in healing is oxygen. Uh, oxygen is life, and without it, we die. Ozone improves the body's oxygenation dramatically. It also increases 2,3-diphosphoglycerate, 2,3-DPG, in the red blood cells. And when this increases, it causes more oxygen to be released by the hemoglobin. So oxygen is good. Ozone also improves red blood cell flexibility. It allows these little red blood cells to go into tiny capillaries, which is essential because if the red blood cells uh, clot, they don't get into those tiny capillaries, you're not going to have oxygenation and circulation to your eye and your brain, 
And this is the cause of many strokes when the blood coagulates and is blocked and doesn't go into those capillaries. Um, ozone also increases the arterial venous oxygen difference. So, you know, when you take a deep breath, our arteries absorb the oxygen, and then it goes through our body, and the oxygen goes into our tissue, and then it goes into the venous system. So we measure the difference between oxygen in the arteries and the veins. The greater the difference, the more oxygen is utilized for the in the body. So ozone does improve the oxygen utilization. Ozone improves ATP production. Uh, I've been a big advocate of doing everything we can to improve ATP in your body. ATP is the gasoline of the cell. Uh, we need ATP for good cellular function. I like microcurrent because microcurrent stimulates ATP. There was a study done that showed that microcurrent improves ATP utilization production by 500%. Ozone also stimulates ATP. Ozone also increases key antioxidants. We know antioxidants are good, fighting infection, disease, strengthening our body. Um, ozone also modulates the immune system. It increases certain cytokinines that reduce inflammation and decreases certain cytokinines that increase inflammation. So a lot of times we have destruction in our body because of these inflammatory cytokines that uh, cause tissue damage. So ozone seems to balance this cytokine uh, in uh, our body and modulates the immune system. Ozone also reduces tumor necrosis factor alpha, TNF alpha. It thus reduces the, the lethal nature of certain insults such as stress and infection. So, in other words, you have a greater chance of survival uh, with undue stress and a major infection. So all these things sound pretty good, right? It also increases nitric oxide production. We've been hearing a lot of uh, talk about nitric oxide on TV. In fact, every time I turn it on, there's a commercial for uh, red beet, uh, and red beets have been shown to increase the nitric oxide in the body. What does nitric oxide do? It improves uh, circulation, and it also lowers blood pressure, gives you energy. So ozone does a lot of great things. And in addition, it's antiviral and antibacterial. So let's talk about the auricular ozone. So what you need for auricular ozone, you need a, a good stethoscope. It has to be a silicone stethoscope. It can't be one of those black plastic stethoscopes. And you need uh, an ozone generator. So here I have my Stratus O3. I'm going to turn it on. There's my tank of oxygen. And you can see the valve is set on one-fourth. The reason why we set it on one-fourth, the, uh, the rate of uh, oxygen flow determines the ozone concentration. So the slower flow, the greater the ozone concentration. The faster the oxygen flow, the lower ozone concentration. So we want one-fourth. That gives us about a 24 gamma. That's a concentration that we find it to be effective for rectal insufflation and for auricular ozone. So I'm getting some ozone in my bag here. And um, I would start by maybe putting about 200 cc's. Some of the bags have a marker, which you can actually tell the, the volume of uh, 200 cc's. Uh, but this big bag here probably has a total volume of maybe uh, 1,000 cc's. So we're just going to put a little bit of ozone in here for this demonstration. So we're going to shut off the oxygen, turn off my generator. There's a little clamp here. Now, one thing that I discovered is when I bought my um, stethoscope, it's designed to be hooked up directly to the ozone generator and administer it this way. You can do it that way, but 
I don't like that because there's a lot of ozone gas that's being admitted to the atmosphere and ozone is uh, toxic to um, your lungs. Uh, if you breathe a little bit, it's not going to cause a problem, but if you have a history of asthma or lung disease, you have to be careful. I have a history of asthma, so when I do this treatment, I'm going to make sure I have a well-ventilated room, put a fan, open up the windows. Now, I discovered a shortcut. In your equipment that you get for rectal insufflation, this is the rectal catheter. What you can do is just cut off a small section, about two inches, which I did here, and then you can connect that to the end of your stethoscope. The other end can go directly into the bag. All right, so then I put the stethoscope into my ears. Uh, you may want to put a little bit of, um, of water. Uh, it, some people, they get irritations in their ear. You do feel a little bit of warmth. I haven't had any problems, and I've been doing the auricular ozone just about every day now during the COVID virus. So I put the stethoscope in, open up the valve, and then I gradually squeeze the ozone, and you'll feel a little bit of warmth in your ear. And I do it slowly, maybe over 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and uh, it's just a very, very effective treatment. And uh, you can sit there, watch a movie, uh, the news, relax as you're doing the ozone treatment. So this is a good treatment to use in conjunction with the rectal insufflation. If you have problems doing the rectal insufflation, uh, then you just may want to do the auricular or do a combination. Remember, the more ozone you get into your body, the better. So more information, I do have a YouTube video on making ozonated eye drops, which I'd like for chronic inflammatory problems of the eye, dry eyes. I've also done a YouTube video on the rectal insufflation and now the latest auricular ozone. I'll have all of this information at, uh, on my website, healingtheeye.com forward slash ozone. So you'll go there, you can see the different links. If you do have any questions on the equipment, how to get started, um, Go to healingthei.com. That's our website, all one word, healingthei.com. Or give us a call at 800 430 9328. Or shoot us an email at info at healingthei.com. So I want to thank you for watching uh, this video. And uh, this is Dr. Edward Condra wishing all of you good health and clear vision. Okay, the auricular ozone is great. I think the rectal insufflation may be a little bit more effective, but the rectal insufflation is a little bit more cumbersome. A lot of people don't like it, so get started with the auricular. A shortcut, if you don't have the stethoscope, if you don't have the silicone tube stethoscope, you can get the end of the bag and put that um, tip of the bag in your ear. So you kind of avoid getting a stethoscope. So you can only do one ear at a time. So maybe five minutes in one ear, five minutes in the other ear. All of these videos uh, are at stopvisionloss.com or my website. These are the links. And here is the equipment that we use both for the auricular and for the rectal. I don't recommend you use the Stratus O3 to make ozonated saline, mainly because it's overkill. You're using the oxygen. It makes too high of a concentration of ozone in the saline, and that could be irritating to your eyes. I like the low gamma. The low gamma is just by getting an ozone generator that uses ambient air. Now, the ozone generator that makes uses ambient air, you can't use that effectively for auricular uh, or rectal. The gamma is just too low. I think you're going to be wasting your time. So for more information regarding ozone, uh, shoot us an email, info at healingtheeye.com, or give us a call. Also for future podcasts, uh, go to www.healthyvision.com.
dot us. That's not dot us. It's just dot us. Uh, so this is your host, Dr. Edward Kondrat. Thank you so much for listening to this um, podcast and wishing you good health and clear vision.